One out of four human beings with their hands on bars, shackled, in the world are locked up here in the land of the free. Khalif Browder was walking home from a party when he was stopped by police. The 13th Amendment to the Constitution makes it unconstitutional for someone to be held as a slave. There are exceptions, including criminals. Hello, welcome to What the Flick. My name is Christy. That is Lonzo. We're talking about Ava DuVernay's documentary, 13th, which is the first nonfiction film ever to open the New York Film Festival, where yes. it got standing ovations, and very deservedly so. Yes, and it's Please. premiering on Netflix, so uh, everybody can see it. Um, so DuVernay basically uh, looks at the 13th Amendment and notes that while it did free the slaves, it came with a loophole, which was that if you were a criminal who was being punished, you could still be held in uh, servitude and bondage. And so how that loophole has expressed itself from Reconstruction to the modern day, uh, it's a fascinating history of uh, race in this country, of how the government has handled uh, black people, black men, uh, and what that has done to our society. Uh, it's an amazingly powerful documentary. Take a look. Some people got the real problem. Animals, beasts that needed to be controlled. You better believe it. I'm only human. It became virtually impossible for a politician to run and appear soft on crime. The kinds of kids that are called super predators. Millions of dollars will be allocated for prison and jail facilities. Three strikes and you are out. It was an enormous burden on the black community, but it also violated a sense of core fairness. Some people got the real the states were required to keep these prisons filled, even if nobody was committing a crime. It's so difficult to talk about mass incarceration because it has become heavily monetized. The focus is on taking people from prison, putting them in community corrections, parole and probation. How much progress is it really if now there's a private company making money off the GPS monitor? now have more African Americans under criminal supervision than all the slaves back in the 1850s. We are the products of the history that our ancestors chose. Products of that set of choices that we have to understand in order to escape from it. Yeah, I wanted to cry watching this entire thing. It's, I was on the verge of it the entire time. It's mm -hmm. really upsetting, and and it has a lot of at the at the very end, it kind of culminates with a lot of the internet footage of the uh, of different like shootings that I did not want to watch on the internet, right. and so then being confronted with them on the big screen is like, God, you know. Right, Eric Garner. Yeah, okay. and Philando um, Castile. Yes, you know. So it's it, but but it's a very step by step film where she, she she talks to the right people and she kind of carries you through these historical moments. So you have, you know, reconstruction happens and the slaves have been freed, but then you've got this, there's still that need for cheap labor. So black men find themselves getting put on chain gangs uh, because they got arrested for loitering, you know. Uh, and then you have Jim Crow and then you have, you know, like R you know Richard Nixon's Law and Order uh, campaign and, and Reagan's War on Drugs where, you know, people dealing crack cocaine got harsher sentences than people dealing powder cocaine. And Newt Gingrich, of all people, thinks that's a bad thing. Who knew? Um, she you has know. a wide variety of voices in here. I yeah, <laughs> and cl the Clintons yes. get grilled a lot yes. here. If anybody thinks it's just going to be like a partisan thing, Bill Clinton tough on crime stance and the three strikes law and the 19, 1994 crime bill you know is put as, un, as is put under as harsh a microscope as everything else is right it, it is definitely not partisan I mean you know what her perspective is but yeah she's very equal opportunity in her willingness to examine everyone's role in where we are today in terms of race in terms of as they put it the, the prison industrial complex right and then you have Clinton toward the end admitting like that was a mistake. Yes. I mean, did he, what, last year he said that? Something okay. like that, yeah, it's pretty recent. Um, but yeah, the... The super predators speech is quoted uh, here. Yeah, right, Hillary saying yeah. super predators, yeah. With, and uh, her scope is amazing here. What she achieves in a relatively short amount of time, the movie's only like an hour and 40 minutes or so, I want to say. It's not even two hours, but it feels thorough and yet concise. And mm. it's calmly powerful. It's not 
hysterical. No. It's not shrieky. She takes her time. She makes her points methodically. She's chosen this beautiful, wide array of really, really thoughtful, intelligent people to, to, to talk about this. I mean, everyone from people who, who lived it, like Angela Davis. Right, Jelani um, Cobb. Cobb. Henry Louis Gates. Um, and then, but then you do have Newt Gingrich. Yes. You know, you have... Um, Prison experts, you have um, columnists, you have professors, and one thing I noticed about this, it is shot so magnificently. Yeah. Like the lighting, and you know, it's, it's a lot of talking heads, and there can be a tendency to make that kind of film seem repetitive. But the the milieus in which she has placed her, yeah. her subjects are varied and beautifully lighted, and it makes each of their bits seem intimate and relevant and yeah. vital. It's not just like blah, 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 and blah, 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 right. blah. Like, it's great care has been taken with every single element of this. The uh, the archival footage is really interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I, she really hits on, one of the things that always drives me nuts is how nowadays everybody wants to claim MLK. And everybody, you know, treats MLK like a hero. And, and oh, you know, when, 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 when people are protesting, oh, why can't you be more like MLK? It's like, uh, MLK protested. MLK got arrested <laughs> for protesting a lot. Right. He was not Hoover, a saint. <laughs> Hoover called him like, you know, the biggest liar in America or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I looked it up. The Gallup poll, I think the last one was for like 1966 or something, had like 67% of Americans disapproved of, of MLK's tactics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's... It, you know, there's a, there, there's a, an amazing historical amnesia that happens in this country in a very short period of time, and she really picks through 150 years worth of this stuff and just kind of shows you how we got how this thing got us to this thing got us to this thing. There's interesting musical choices from you yeah. know Nina Simone to Public Enemy. Um, yeah, this is this is a movie that left me shaken and upset, which is what an agenda-driven documentary should do. Yeah. And I don't say agenda-driven like that's a bad thing. I mean, she clearly has a point to make, and she makes it exceedingly well. And it's unfortunately an incredibly relevant point that she makes oh, and yeah. and it's it feels absolutely up to the minute in yeah. that there's Trump footage. There's like talking Trump about law rally, and order just like Nixon, right, yeah. But also like, like like Trump rally footage and she cross cuts so beautifully and so damningly and so emotionally between young black people being pushed around and being spat on and being hit at Trump rallies with, you know, the from fire the hoses. segregated South, like black men being shoved across the street and being yeah. kicked and pushed. And it's just, it's it's so powerful. You've, you've got to see this movie. I don't know, it's on Netflix, so you can it, see it. it. Yeah, it debuts but, on Netflix on Friday. But um, if you can see it in the theater, it's, it's all, it's, it's, it is gorgeous, it's important yeah. from, a, from a, you know, a substance perspective, but it's also beautiful to look at. And I just don't know how she got her arms around this massive, complicated topic in such a concise and powerful way. It's just one of the best movies of the year, I would no say. No question, yeah. And, and, and you're right, it's not shrieky. It states, it lays out a case in a very methodical way. Yeah. And and yeah, I, I, I look forward to the discussion that I hope that it prompts. Yes, um, and good good on you, Ava DuVernay, and, and, yeah. and further diversifying the kind of movies that you make, which I love to see. So um, on my, my number's a 9.5. What is yours? I give it a 9, yeah. All right, so great. our average is 9.3. It's at 97% on the tomato meter. If you're going to see one movie about slavery this week... I'd make it 13th. Yeah, They're interesting. Yeah. Oh, and she also, she shows clips from Birth of a Nation. That's true. The, the Griffith the one. The Griffith yeah, one. So, and how, and how that also so, plays the seeds of the idea of men as predators, black men as predators. Anyway, yes. Go see it, please.